Welcome to worship this seventh Sunday after Pentecost. This week, more seeds find more trouble. As Jesus tosses out another public parable with a private explanation. The world is pictured as a field full of both wheat and weeds, calling to mind what Frederick Beekner wrote. The grace of God means something like, here is your life. You might never have been, but you are, because the party wouldn't have been complete without you. Here is the world. Beautiful and terrible things will happen. Don't be afraid. I am with you. Nothing can ever separate us. It's for you I created the universe. I love you. Welcome to our weekly celebration of God's troubled yet triumphant grace. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your Spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Children's time. A long time ago, when I was 
young and handsome a long time ago. Some people thought I looked like a movie star. Get rid of the little silver hairs on the chin, get rid of the glasses. And a kid in my first congregation thought that I looked like this guy. Jim Carrey, star of Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. This is a movie from very, 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 very long ago. Ask your parents. We, uh, we looked a lot alike, people thought. Hmm, I'll let you decide. Today, Jesus tells a story about lookalikes. Wheat and weeds. But not just any weeds. Zizania in Greek, which is a specific kind of weed that looks almost exactly like wheat. So, this farmer had an enemy who came in the middle of the night and sowed a bunch of zizania among the wheat. Weeds and wheat together, all tangled up and mixed up in the same field. And it was hard to tell them apart, especially because the wheat and the weeds did not keep six feet of social distance. Well, what are the people working the farm to do? They said, hey, you want us to, to get rid of the weeds? You want us to take them away? And the wise farmer said no. Because if you pull out the weeds, you will uproot the wheat at the same time. It's a way that Jesus was trying to teach us that, you know, don't just give up on people because you think they're one or the other. We all look pretty much the same. And even if you can tell apart good people from bad people, even if you know the difference, we're so close together and we're so connected to each other that if you get rid of one, you could hurt the other. And so the sorting out, the judging, the deciding who's right, who's wrong, who's good, who's bad, all of that stuff, Jesus said, hey, Leave it to God instead of doing damage. Because, especially for us, it can be hard to tell us apart. I know when I look in the mirror, I'm not sure. Am I good? Am I bad? Am I wheat? Am I weed? It depends on the day. So let's pray. Gracious God, you know us better than we know ourselves. And you know everyone else better than we do too. So, we trust that you will sort it all out later. Help us, in the meantime, to love each other and treat each other well. No matter who we are. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, 
so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed in us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we groan inwardly while we wait for adoption the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So, when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers... Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected to be burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Between the parable and the explanation are several verses and footsteps and years. Among the verses, Matthew repeats that Jesus only spoke to the crowds in parables, a questionable choice about which the disciples asked him directly. 
The reason I speak to them in parables, he replied, is that seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. Now you know how the crowds felt. The footsteps are from Jesus. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. So the explanation of the parable is then given only to the disciples for internal ears only. There is also ample reason to suspect it was really not given to the 12 guys around Jesus, but to the church around Matthew about 50 years later. The early church assigned this anonymous gospel to the disciple who was a tax collector, if not on the basis of solid memory and hard evidence, then on a well-educated guess. The tax collector is an excellent candidate because this writer, who was obsessed with mercy and judgment, also had a mathematician's appetite for reading parables by solving for X. Literary types call this allegory. Each detail in the story stands for something else, like letters in algebra. Matthew makes his church listen in with the disciples as Jesus cracks the code. The sower is the son of man, the field is the world, etc. He does not identify the slaves who do nothing because he is talking to them and intentionally omitting them from the action. Matthew is trying yet again to get through to his people a central truth. There will be judgment and you are not in charge of it. Do not judge. Jesus preaches directly in his first sermon so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Then, throughout the gospel, Jesus continually chides the Pharisees, who embody religious judgment of others. As a don't-be-that-guy warning to the people in the church. He spends a whole chapter near the end dismantling them with just withering, sarcastic critique. I suspect it is a different version of the same thing he is doing by confusing the crowds with the parables. Before building up understanding, he has to tear it down. He is doing a teacher's hardest work. He is teaching us to unlearn things, especially judgment. Finally, as his grand finale, Jesus tells a story that sounds an awful lot like today's. Instead of wheat and weeds, he tells of the final fate of sheep and goats. The king has to separate them, and everyone in the story is surprised to find out which is which. Not only did they fail to recognize the king, 
hidden among them and the most needy and vulnerable, they also fail to recognize themselves. It is the final thundering drum solo, completing the beat that Matthew has been pounding all along. There will be a judgment. And you are not in charge of it. Imagine, if you can, a community of people who rush to judgment about each other. I know it's a stretch. We have come so far and matured so much as a society since back then. Current politics and social media demonstrate such advances advances and mature discourse and civility that it can be hard for us to relate. But please try. Matthew's church, it seems, was, from reading between the lines, was inclined to judgment and petty social comparison and conflict. There were Jews and Gentiles, which is to say, natives and immigrants, poor and rich, newcomers and old-timers, reliable, heavy contributors, and marginal flakes, holy ones and hypocrites, all mixed and tangled up together in one social platform. I know this must be really difficult to imagine. So thanks for hanging with me. In this motley mix, it was sometimes easy to distinguish the good eggs from the problem children, and sometimes not. There was also a vast network of relationships with plenty of subterranean history and personal entanglements beneath the Sunday morning surface. People including Matthew, were both protective of their friends and sick of other people's crap. The temptation to judge and to try to winnow out the weeds was strong. What does God have to say about this? God says, no. No, for in gathering the Zizania, you would uproot the Satan along with them. Forgive both of them to grow together until the harvest. Zizania is a particular kind of weed that looks almost exactly like wheat. They are easily mistaken for one another above ground, never mind what's happening below. So the master says, forgive, which is what we should do for the translator who settled for the word let instead. We can let the weeds grow. We can forgive their presence with confidence in Matthew's ongoing drumbeat, there will be a judgment, and we are not in charge of it. Well, both of these unwelcome truths are actually good news. Turns out we are not as good at judgment as we think we are. But if we insist on doing it, God will honor, which is to say, punish, our judgment by using our standards on us. Since all of our hearts and track records are mixed fields, that's not a great idea. The sorting is better left in wiser hands than ours. But the fact 
that there will be judgment in God's time, on God's terms, is also good news, albeit terrifying, as our Revelation Bible study class is learning. If you like weeping and gnashing of teeth, we've got two solid weeks for you across 13 chapters in vivid and gruesome technicolor. If you don't, if, like me, you look in the mirror and see weed and goat and dental doom, listen carefully again to Matthew's drumbeat. There will be a judgment, and you are not in charge of it. If you are sick of people's crap, Jesus is promising a justice better and truer and more complete than any we can manage on our own. We can and should still continue to call out unacceptable behavior, but for us to judge and uproot people, any child of either kingdom or the evil one, And who's really to tell? That is the most unacceptable behavior. God has appointed someone else to judge. And that someone else happens to be the one who loves us all enough to die and rise for us. The twist in Matthew's story is that we judge Jesus quite badly, and then God overrules it. Resurrection, Frederick Beekner notes, means that the worst thing is never the last thing. Judgment is part but not all, and not the end of the story. Judgment is part of mercy. Judgment is ordered toward redemption, Anna Case Winters writes. Judgment is part of the renewal of all things. So if judgment is indeed fire, it is an essential part of the equation that makes the righteous shine like the sun. We cannot separate them any better than we can separate weeds from wheat or goats from sheep or Christ from our neighbor. So we will have to forgive God handling judgment without us. No, it won't be the way that we would do it. Thanks be to God. Christ, we pray. 
plant seeds for the kingdom. We follow in faith what's begun. Lord, send in our hearts the power of your word to spread the news of your son. Build us up, Lord, build us up. and true growing in Christ we plant seeds for the kingdom we follow in faith what's begun Lord send in our hearts the power of your word to spread the news of your Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, you are invited to respond, hear our prayer. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by our unjust, fearful, and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way, especially the many who battle coronavirus as patients and caregivers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the safety of those who travel. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you.